Hi, everybody. I'm Renza Shabilia from Diabetes Australia and welcome to another one of our Tech Talks. This is where I spend just a couple of minutes with you talking about some of the latest and greatest things in technology in Australia, except today, not necessarily going to be talking about the latest and greatest. We're going to be doing an insulin pump 101. We're going back to basics. So this is for people who are not already using a pump and who are wanting a little bit of information about it. What is an insulin pump? What's it all about? Who uses them? How do you get one? And where can you go for more information? So let's see if we can cover all of that in just a couple of minutes. So let's start with this. What is an insulin pump? So an insulin pump is a way of delivering insulin. So for people, and we're focusing right now on for people with type 1 diabetes, and I'll talk about why in a minute, but if you have type 1 diabetes, you will be using insulin to manage your diabetes. Um, for most people at first, they're given an insulin pen to deliver that insulin. An insulin pump is just another way of delivering insulin, albeit a very fancy way of doing it. Now, before you're on, if you're start on um, injections, you'll be probably using two different sorts of insulin. You'll be using short acting and long acting. Insulin pumps don't do that. They only use short acting insulin, but insulin is delivered in two ways. It is delivered um, with basal insulin. I'm going to be throwing around some fancy words, but I promise I'll explain what they mean. So basal insulin means that it's, it's like insulin dripping into you constantly. Okay. And then there's bolus insulin. And that's when you give yourself insulin because you've just eaten some carbohydrates or for other reasons, like your blood sugar is a little bit high out of range and you want to bring it back down. So you're doing a correction dose. Um, so that is how they work. That's why you don't need any of the long acting insulin because you're constantly getting that little dribble of short acting insulin. The way that it works is that a pump is like a little box. Um, you know what? I'm going to show you one here. Look, this is mine. Um, okay, so it's a little box and there's a tube in my one. My one's got a tube. And that then there's a little cannula that sits just under my skin. And that is how the insulin infuses into my body. I change that cannula every three days. Some people stretch it out to four, but really every three days is the best way to avoid getting an infection. And then when I recite it after that three days, I generally move it around. I cite mine on my tummy, but some, but some people prefer to use their legs or around their back, anywhere where there's a little bit of extra subcutaneous fat. That's what they like to sort of use to, um, to sorry, that's what they like to use to actually um, attach the, um, the cannula. Now, um, so that's sort of what it is. Who's it for? Well, I mentioned that it's kind of for people with type 1 diabetes. And I say that because in Australia, there are very few people with type 2 diabetes using insulin pumps. And the reason for that is that there is no funding available for people with type 2 diabetes at this point in time. So insulin pumps are covered by private health insurance. They're expensive. They're between eight and $9,000 for that little box. Um, but if you have private health insurance and you will need to have hospital cover not extras you'll have to have hospital cover and each insurance fund will be different as to which tier of hospital cover you'll need pick up the phone and you'll have to ask them um, but if you have the right level you will not have to pay for the pump and then there are the consumables that's the bits that you change so you know how I said I change some bit every three days um, and then there's also inside the actual pump there's um, a little reservoir or um, or a cartridge that I fill with insulin and that I also change every three days um, and they're on the NDSS so they are subsidized they are um, there's a copay on them um, and again that will depend the cost of it will depend of if you're on a healthcare card or if you're not on a healthcare card but all the information about that is under insulin pump consumables on the NDSS. We will add all of these websites in the chat so you'll be able to see them and you'll be able to chase that up. So that is really who is using them. It's generally people with type 1 diabetes. And when I say people, I mean people of all ages. I know of babies that have been um, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes who are using insulin pumps. And I also know people who have been living with diabetes for many, many years who are using them. Um, there is no right time to start on a pump. It's when it's right for you. And that's a conversation that you want to have with your healthcare professional um, and think about it yourself. You know, is this something that you want? You are attached to it 24 hours a day. That can be something that a lot of people might find quite confronting. 
I've been pumping for 20 years now. Can't imagine not using an insulin pump. I've actually never taken an insulin pump break and gone back to injections, although that's something that a lot of people do. They kind of really like being able to do that when they're on holidays or if they just want to have a break from being attached to something all the time. Um, again, these are the conversations that you need to have with your healthcare professional. Um, I would also encourage you to have um, a look and a chat with other people with diabetes to hear what their experiences are. So there's lots of online groups and face-to-face -face support groups where you can speak with people who are using insulin pumps to see what they have to say. So that is a really, really very quick, very general overview on insulin pump therapy. Get online and have a look at what else is out there. Um, there are pumps available in Australia, and I'm going to talk all about that in the next one of these tech talks. And we'll talk about where you can go to find out more information about different brands. So you can have a look and see which one is right for you. Um, but if you have any questions, please just share them with us and hopefully we'll be able to get to them and answer them. But this might be something for you. If you're interested, absolutely start asking around. Ask your healthcare team, ask other people with diabetes, ask us, we'll be able to help you too. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tech talk. I speak really quickly, I know, but I've got so much to say about wonderful technology and diabetes. I hope you found this useful. Thanks. Bye.